Vieira. Maniscalco. Here. Hertek. Here. Goods, Miranda, and Citro. Here. We have a physical form. Thank you very much. Next case is agenda item number eight. File number AB2-22-04. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number eight, case AB2-22-04. Is requesting a special use two for a restaurant, beer, and wine consumption on premises at the location 1724 North Nebraska Avenue. I'll go ahead and share the aerial. As you see, the property here outlined in red, you have North Nebraska. To the, um, to the east. You also have uh, East Palm and 7th, and then, of course, over to the east more, you'll run into Ebor. <coughs> the proposed uses for a restaurant, AB sales area of 1,536 square feet indoors. The property is in the Ebor City Commercial General Zoning District, YC5. Pedestrian access to the site comes off of East 7th Avenue, to the north and North Nebraska, as I'll show you in pictures to come in the east. The required parking, as I will share the site plan. The required parking for the site is three spaces, and the site plan is showing 12 parking spaces being proposed for the restaurant establishment. There is a proposed waiver here under section 27-132, and that's to reduce the required distance separation from 250 feet to 197 feet from other AB sales establishment. There is that, uh, there's a 2K Food Mart Inc. Uh, 197 feet away. I will now show you elevations provided by the applicant. You have an elevation from the west side, from the east, south, and to the north. As I went out to the site myself, I took pictures. Bar. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Generic bar. <laughs> All right, as we see the site uh, as is, you'll have the public notice sign. You'll have the public notice sign bar. here of the establishment. <laughs> bar <Yoga>. is the <laughs> name. You have bar, you have yoga, you have tattoo, <laughs> and more to the south. On what stop <laughs> shopping? Here you go. <laughs> you can decide which side you come in. And more, more to the south. On Nebraska here, you'll have the Fawn Factory, uh, which is uh, to the south of the yoga and tattoo parlor. <laughs> to the south of the site, you'll have Salem's. Also, you'll have uh, down Nebraska, you'll have Channel Club Apartments and uh, more Channel Side down there. To the east, You'll have East 7th, which leads down to Ebor. More to the east, you'll have vacant land. Also, you'll have a uh, mart, uh, mini mart out there. To the west, You'll have an uh, Ebor Healthcare Clinic. <laughs> to the north, you'll have this vacant parking lot or vacant piece of land. One more picture up to the east, you'll have a traffic light leading down to Ebor. 
Development Review staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be inconsistent with the Land Development Code. Uh, is it the Council's pleasure to approve the application? The applicant must provide revisions between first and second reading. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hussain? Council Magoos. Zane, is say this is a bar restaurant? Or is this strictly a bar? This is a restaurant. The proposed use is a restaurant. Restaurant. Correct. All right. Councilor Wilhurtay. What was inconsistent? Uh, it is inconsistent due to the one waiver. Okay. They have the waiver requesting uh, the separation distance. Okay, below. okay, sorry. That, that's yeah. the reason why. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. Applicant. Hi, good evening. Uh, Casey Feltner, 4301 West Boy Scout Road, Suite 300, Shuts and Bowen, on behalf of the applicant. Um, I, I had to sit through the last few, few hours, so I will be very, very, very brief. Um, I have to commend staff for their hard work because, to, to be very brief on the history of this, this has been an application that's been going on since April of 2021. It started out as an AB1. We then moved it to an AB2 earlier this year. And of course, with all the backup and everything like that, we completely understand the city council's full schedule. And so therefore, we've been trying to prepare and trying to prepare and trying to get this right. Um, Zane uh, has been working with us. There are some minor um, site plan reductions that we're willing to make between um, reading one and reading two. As a matter of fact, our architect was working with Zane last week on making those that are denoted in the staff report. Um, and with regard to the waiver, um, again, the 2K Mart is not a, the same use that we're asking for here. Here we're asking for a restaurant, even though the signage says bar. Signage is gonna change, I promise. So um, these are not only that, but um, the applicants here have a history in the city of Tampa with um, alcoholic special beverage uses. They've been responsible patrons and they've been approved before. So with that, we would respectfully ask that the city council um, approve the waiver under the 27132 criteria um, and allow us to move forward to the second reading wherein we can make the minor uh, corrections to the site plan that the staff report outlines. And with that, uh, council, I'll yield my time and answer any questions. Any comments or questions? Councilman Goods. I know this is indoors, but any, any amplified sound, any, any, any music? Uh... None planned. Uh... Okay. Oh, yep, yep. Sorry, this is the applicant. Hi. Is that your name uh, and your address? Ryan Fouché, uh, 1209 Holmes Avenue, uh, Tampa. Um, none planned. Um, we do have indoor speakers for ambiance. All right, final question for the applicant. Uh, you talk about the restaurant hours. Uh, we're looking at five to midnight, um, possibly open for lunch down the road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if I may, Councilman, on the, on the hours in the staff report, it does address the hours that we meet the, the applicable code. Any other questions? Is there anyone in chambers that would like to speak to this? <coughs> Second. Thank you. We uh, have a motion by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda to close. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number eight, file number AB222-4. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance approving a special use permit mm -hmm. SU for alcohol beverage sales, restaurant consumption on premise only and making lawful the sale of beer and wine at or from the certain lot, plot, or tract of land located at 1724 North Nebraska Avenue, Tampa, Florida, as more particularly described in Section 2, providing that all ordinance or partial ordinance in conflict are repealed, providing an effective date. Second. And that is with the waiver? Yes, sir. Thank you. We have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, second by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Goose. Yes. Vieira. Vieira. Oh, I see, I see his lips. He's muted. Oh, he was muted. Vieira. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Hurtet. Yes. Carlson. Yes. And Citro. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 20th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Agenda item number 10. File number AB2, 22-16.
Mr. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda, agenda item number 10, case AB2 22-16. This being uh, requesting a special use two for a small venue beer, wine, and liquor consumption on premises at the locations 1802 and 1804 East 4th Avenue. I'll go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. As you see here to the south, you'll have East 4th. To the north, you'll have East uh, 5th and 6th. Uh, also to the east, you'll have North 19th Street. And to the west, you'll have North 17th Street, as you're here in the Ebor District. The site is zoned YC7. The proposed use is for retail sales. The property is uh, has an area of 13,406 square feet or 0.31 acres. The AB sales area is 998 square feet indoors and 3,666 square feet outdoors for a total AB sales area of 4,664 uh, square feet. I will share the site plan provided by the applicant. The access to the site comes from the alley to the north. The required parking for the site is five parking spaces and the applicant is providing two parking spaces here as you see from the north side. There is one waiver being requested and that is for the parking. The request to reduce the parking from five spaces to two spaces for that's a 60% reduction. I will now show the elevations provided by the applicant. First, you have the elevation from the south, elevation from the east, elevation from the west, and elevation from the north. As I went out to the site and took pictures, I'll show you what I came across. You'll first have a picture of the site itself. You have the public notice sign right here. Another picture of the site. This is from the west side. Another picture of the site. This is from the south. Taking a picture here from the west side of the site, you'll see north and south, you'll see more of Ebor. To the east of the site, you have residential and commercial. You have to the south of the site, you have commercial, you have residential, and you also have industrial. This is to the south. And another picture to the south, you'll see the property right south of the proposed property. Development Review and Compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be inconsistent with the land development code. Should it be council's pleasure to approve the application, uh, the applicant must re provide revisions between first and second reading. Yes, sir. Councilman Goods. Zane, is this a straight bar or, or is this going to be a restaurant bar? What, what is it? This is a uh, retail sales. You still need retail sales? Retail, yes, sir. Are we talking about beer, craft, you know, brewery? What are we talking about? Uh, retail, retail, retail cafe. You got retail sales. <laughs> All right, I'll wait to hear from Tyler. Let's see. Petitioner. Good evening, Council. Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. I believe there's a PowerPoint. 
see it queued up. If you let me know when you see it on your screen. I think Zane did a great job acquainting us of where we are, really, in the height of uh, heart of Ybor City. This is in the historic district. It's YC7 zoning. That's a mixed-use category. Uh, we've already received a certificate of appropriateness from the Barrio Latino Commission for the design of this project. It's a bit of an unusual project um, in a good way. So what you see on the left that's labeled dog park is what it's is correct. That is a dog park. It is owned by Friends of Ybor, Inc., which is a uh, nonprofit charity started by Daryl Shaw. Daryl's the owner of the easterly adjacent parcel as well. So the idea is that this is going to be a privately run, privately managed uh, dog park that is open to the public. This is supposed to be a neighborhood asset, and that's what Friends of Ebor was founded to do, to put these types of neighborhood assets, placemaking uh, opportunities within Ebor City. On the right, why we are here this evening, is we're constructing a, it, it's, it's meant to look like a residential structure and fit right in with the neighborhood, but it's gonna be a, a cafe, breakfast, lunch, beer, wine, uh, place not just for folks who are at the dog park, but really for the entire neighborhood. And there are also two uh, fairly small residential units on the second floor. So it's truly going to be a mixed-use building. One thing to, I think, to note that this is, you, there's one in Kennedy, there's one in Nebraska where there are kind of bars that are for people with dogs to, to bring their dogs and it's all built around. That's, that's not really what this is. While dogs are, are more than welcome and certainly encouraged, at the cafe, this is supposed to be a, a neighborhood cafe that happens to be next door to a dog park that's going to be, again, privately managed, privately operated, but 100% open to the public in the Ebor community. Um, two issues that I know council sometimes has questions about, amplified sound, we're proposing to stop at 10 p.m. on uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 11 p.m. Thursday through Saturday, in, in lieu of uh, chapter 14 hours, proposing service to stop at 1 a.m. Um, every every night of the week. It, it's probably going to be well before that, candidly, that there's no intent to bring um, the many options for nightlife that are along 7th Avenue, three blocks south to 4th, uh, but just in the interest of, of flexibility, we want to keep 1 a.m. as a, an outside closing time. Zane alluded to a, a waiver. As you can see on screen, uh, there are two parking spaces to the, to the north of the site. Those directly serve the two residential units there. However, we do have a 10-year recorded lease for three parking spaces just across the street. Uh, when we got the Barrio Latino Commission's approval of the Certificate of Appropriateness, that was mentioned, but it wasn't technically presented to them as a variance, so that's why we are asking for the waiver. So we, we were asking for a waiver that there's only two parking spaces on site. However, um, the City Attorney's Office has approved the form of lease. It's already been recorded in the public records. There's a 10-year lease for three parking spaces that are uh, literally across the street. So there are five parking spaces within, you know, certainly within less than a block. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions in the interest of time. Any questions for the petitioner? <laughs> Is there anyone in chambers who would like to make public comment to this? We have a motion closed by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. Sure, I'd like to move uh, file number AB2-22-16. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance approving the special use permit S2 for alcoholic beverage sales, small venue consumption on premises only in making lawful the sale of beverages regardless of alcoholic content, beer, wine, and liquor on that certain lot, plot, or track of land located at 1802 and 1804 East 4th Avenue, Tampa, Florida, is more particularly described in Section 2, providing that all ordinances or parts of ordinances that conflict are repealed, providing effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson. <coughs> Seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 20th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Agenda item number 12, file number REZ 22-47. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. 
This is a proposed rezoning from CN and RS60 to PD residential single family detached and residential single family semi detached at the location 1401, 1409, 1411, 1413, and 1415 East 29th Avenue and uh, 3510 North 15th Street. I'll now pass along to our Planning Commission. Uh, Danny Collins with your Planning Commission staff have been sworn in. Um, our next case is within the Central Tampa Planning District and more specifically the East Tampa Urban Village. Um, the closest public recreation facility is Reagan Park, located approximately two blocks north of the subject site. Closest transit stop is located across the street from the subject site on East 29th Avenue and North Avenida Republico de Cuba. Uh, Part Route 9 connects the subject site to downtown Tampa and the University uh, Area Transit Center. Subject site is, within, is not within an evacuation zone. Here's an aerial map of the subject site and the surrounding properties. Um, you'll see the subject site that's outlined in this purple color. It's on the southwest portion of the intersection of North 15th Street and, and East 29th <laughs> Avenue. Um, you'll see that there is uh, a mix of non-residential uses along this segment of North 15th Street, as well as some residential uses um, in the immediate surrounding area. Um, this is um, the adopted future land use map. Um, uh, portions of the site uh, fronting North 15th Street are recognized under the CC335 designation, while the western portion of the subject site is recognized under the uh, Residential 10 future land use designation. The CC35 designation uh, runs along this segment of North 15th Street and then it transitions east and west um, to the Residential 10 designation. The Planning Commission uh, staff reviewed the application, found no adverse impacts to the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, this portion of East 29th Street, or East 29th Avenue between North 13th and North 16th, excluding the subject site has an existing density of 10.97 units per acre. Uh, the plan development proposes an overall density of 13.44 uh, dwelling units per acre, which is comparable to the density in the surrounding area. Um, the applicant is utilizing land use policy 5.1.6 to weigh the density permitted under the um, CC35 designation over the entire site through this PD. Uh, the PD is sensitive uh, to the surrounding neighborhood by proposing uh, single family detached uh, units uh, to provide a transition between an existing single family detached unit and the proposed single family attached units, which is supported by the comprehensive plan. The PD uh, supports uh, the mixed use corridor policies by, by providing sidewalks along the adjacent public right of way and orienting uh, unit entrance towards the neighborhood mm -hmm. sidewalk and street. Um, the request supports many of the policies in the comp comprehensive plans relates to housing the city's population. The PD proposes additional housing opportunities in the East Tampa Urban Village. Um, this is an area of the city where the comprehensive plan directs the greatest share of growth. Um, in conclusion, the request is comparable and compatible with the development pattern. Um, in this portion of the Ebor Height or Ebor uh, neighborhood, and is consistent with the long-range development pattern encouraged under the community mix, or community commercial 35 future land use designation. Um, between first and second reading, the Planning Commission staff requests that the applicant provides the acreage for each land use uh, designation in the site data table and to de delineate the uh, boundaries um, on the site plan. Also, um, we would request that. The, uh, there a note be provided on the site plan referencing land use policy 5.1.6. Um, based on these considerations, the Planning Commission staff finds the request consistent with the uh, Tampa Comprehensive Plan. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Bob? Thank you. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. I'd like to clear the record and make a uh, correction. Uh, the agenda was, uh, there was a mistype on the agenda. The proposed rezoning is from CI and RS60 to PD. So. Is that a, a is, is the. Um, I'm sorry. Um, correction. RS50 and CI to PD. That's the correct rezoning. And this is for which case number? Number 12, RZ22 47. Correct. Again, it's from. Is the is the is the ordinance correct? Is the question. Yes. Thank you. Correct. As I will continue, I will show the overhead view of the site plan. Zoom on in. 
The proposed rezoning is to allow for the development of two residential single family units as you have unit single family and unit single family and 14 residential semi-detached units here and here for a total of 16 units. The subject site contains approximately 51,621 square feet or approximately 1.19 acres. It is comprised of block face of East 29th Avenue here to the north and north uh, you have North Republica and also you have North uh, 15th Street. The site is surrounded as I'll show you the aerial view See the, uh, the site here, outline in red. Right, site is surrounded to the north with single family detached and semi detached units uses, and these are in the RS50 and RM16 zoning districts. There's a vehicle repair shop in the CI district, uh, also farther to the north. Residential single family detached uses to the west in the RS50. And residential single family detached uses to the south and the east in the RS50 and CI districts. I'll share the elevations provided by the applicant. See the, the elevation from the north side. from the east, south, and the west. You all see those semi-detached units you have from the north, east, south, and west. As I went out to the site, took pictures. You'll see the site currently. More pictures of the site. To the north, you'll have that residential single family and also the commercial. More residential single family houses to the north. To the west, you'll have the intersection of East 29th and North Republica de Cuba. You'll have residential single family and multifamily. And farther to the east, you'll have a um, uh, you'll have a car detail shop. The applicant is requesting two waivers. First, section twenty-seven two hundred and forty to to increase the front yard setback from unit six and to nine from the required twenty to twenty-four feet point oh two, and this is measured from the front building wall for the grand tree protection. Second waiver being proposed, 27-283.12, to allow maneuvering in the right-of-way for the parking spaces for a multiple unit development with more than four units on the zoning lot and where existing traffic counts are greater than 15, 000, or sorry, 1,500 vehicles uh, per day on the adjacent roadway. Now, development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the land development code. Should it be council's pleasure to approve the application, the app uh, applicant must provide uh, changes between first and second reading as per the revision sheet. Any questions for staff? Thank you. Petitioner? Sorry, I was not 
sure if Aaron was going to get it. Yeah. Did you want to get up? Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, there's one more member of staff. <laughs> he has been waiting patiently. Aaron Mayor Development Coordination. There is actually, just wanted to fix on the record, that there is one waiver to remove a grand tree, uh, a 40-inch laurel oak rated C7. That's it. Do you have any questions on here? Can, can we see that? See what? Do you have a picture of it, of the um, site plan with where the tree... I have it on my side. Okay. I don't have a picture of it. If, if I may ask a question, please. What kind of tree is it? A C7. It's a, it is a laurel oak, 40 inch DBH laurel oak. And it's a C7? C7. How old, how old would you speculate it is? It's probably 40, 50 years old. And they live to 70? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm hmm. Thank you, Council. Catherine Coyle, um, the Director of Development, uh, Land Development and Planning for Domain Homes. Uh, we're located at 5815 South McDill Avenue, Tampa, Florida, 33611. Um, I do have a petition uh, from some of the adjacent neighbors around the block that uh, we had them sign and some copies of the site plan with colors and where the grand trees are located. For the record? What is on the overhead is the uh, zoning map, <coughs> and as you notice, uh, noted on Zane's map, RM16 is to the north, RS50 on either side with a, the pocket of CI along the corridor where in certain spots it does jut in with the CI. Um, these dots represent the people that signed the petition. Uh, the small dot represents um, the neighbor to the south, Belinda Scaglioni, who I've been in communication with. There was a a uh, dangerous tree actually that was dropping limbs on her property and I just had that removed with city's approval um, on an emergency and I wasn't able to coordinate back with her to get a an email back from her um, anyway you can see the pattern of the zoning um, I included <coughs> the dots on each map you'll see the land use as well as um, mr. Collins mentioned you see the CC 35 um, and as mentioned in the staff report from the Planning Commission, it is 35 units per acre in the CC35, 10 units per acre in the flesh-colored R10. We are utilizing the urban village policy that allows us to spread the density. Um, by the calculation of this particular acreage, we would be allowed 18 units potentially. Uh, we are only seeking 16, and I'll go through the site plan in just a second to show you how we're laying that out. One additional map I wanted to share with you is the existing land use pattern. And this is uh, from the Planning Commission's Pima mapping website. And they pull this from the property appraiser information for the DRR codes, the taxing codes. This is the property in the center. And although, as in the zoning and the land use, it's pretty solid blocks of R10 and RS50 surrounding the corridor, you will notice there's much more of a scattering of uses two family uses throughout the single family what is supposed to be single family zoning there are existing two family developments throughout as well as um, institutional and light commercial stretching into beyond the ci corridor and cc35 corridor and this large development to the east is belmont heights if i go to the proposed site plan i colorize it to Give you a better indication of green versus building footprint um, it is a very large parcel it's the entire block face along 29th what we have we're anchoring the two sides the two corners with the single family homes and then putting in the townhouse style semi-detached in between the one waiver we do have for the setback requirement is to preserve this co-dominant uh, laurel oak that's here that's a grand tree this tree in the center right here is the one that is actually the 40 inch C7 Laurel Oak. Uh, 
almost hazardous <laughs> if you go through the ratings um, as a C7. Uh, looking at the position of the buildings, we did try to push and pull the buildings every which way we could to try to actually save that tree. However, there, there are some uh, a few defects in it that also made it a little difficult to keep uh, located in the center of the property. We also wanted to try to preserve as much as possible, which we were actually able to do, the East Tampa side yard setbacks as well, uh, between five and six feet uh, between, so it's anywhere from 10 to 12 feet between the buildings. Um, and these buildings are actually typically, si they are sized to a larger single family style house. They're, they're 40 feet wide, wide, so 20 feet for each unit. Uh, they have 15, 1,489 square feet of living, 1,780 including the garage. And then the single family homes on the side are uh, just shy of 1,300 square feet living and 1,500 square feet with the garage. Uh, in this rear yard back here, there is a small, it's not small actually, it's shallow, uh, retention area. In order to do this, this is uh, not platted land. There are not individually platted lots here. So we do have to go through the subdivision process. And because we go through the subdivision process with the city rules uh, that are in place, uh, we do have to follow a commercial standard for stormwater, even though this is what would normally be a typical single family uh, development. So under the stormwater pr provisions under commercial, we will have to create a specific place to capture water. Although each individual lot measures the typical lot size that an East Tampa lot would have, and we will be using our standard downspouts and ADS pipe, and we'll actually treat each lot as a standalone lot for stormwater as we normally would. We are required to do, do this under current city procedure for stormwater or for uh, subdivision. Um, we did get an indication also pre preliminarily that we will have to do a, a water main extension uh, along 29th. Uh, there's only a two inch line out there, so we will have to put in a six inch line as well. Um, we are preserving two additional grand trees back here. And uh, there was an additional comment in the staff revision sheet to shift this driveway north just a little bit. These are two palm trees. It's a three foot protective radius. So we'll actually be pulling that a little bit to the north to preserve those trees. We'll be redoing the sidewalks on all sides uh, per city standards. And as mentioned, these are the fronts of the two single family homes. And then this is one style of the semi-detached townhome with the arched entrances and the trellises and the shutters. And then this is the other one, which is more of a kind of our coastal farmhouse style. Uh, we've built uh, just a few of these so far. They're, they're new in our repertoire, <laughs> our portfolio. Um, this one is just finishing up. The light fixtures still need to go in. Um, and a couple other ornamentation pieces, but these face, uh, if you've been by them, it's a dead end street actually. It faces I-4 on 15th Avenue, just south of Columbus. Um, they sold immediately. They were, uh, I think they sold around 279. So they are, these are attainable. Uh, we also have um, eight of these units going in at 34th in Louisiana, um, all for 329 and 349. And these units are gonna be approximately around that same same price point, they'll all be sub 400, um, mainly going for families um, in the area. We agree with all the staff uh, revisions and we're happy to make them between first and second reading. And I'm available for any questions. Councilwoman Hurtak. Can you put up the site plan again? Yes, ma'am. Those are 12 driveways on this block 12 driveways is there a reason you couldn't have put them in the back these driveways actually are the same width as a standard single family driveway uh, i know but there's mm -hmm. 12 of them there and if you look in that area there aren't 12 driveways on any neighboring block and i'm not i i don't know why you can't put it there's plenty of room behind and then ask for the setback waiver instead. And I'm just not sure why this sort of stuff keeps happening. Well, to put it in perspective, this is 100 feet deep here. 
right? Mm -hmm. Putting the driveways in the rear. Uh, the minimum standard for a private road, this goes through subdivision, uh, is 35 feet. So we only have 65 feet left with that road running behind us. There's also the ad, quite honestly, the economics behind it. This water main extension, we literally are just finishing up one on 15th for those other units. It was $140,000 for four, 400 feet. And that was only a four inch line. We're gonna have the, the same expense, if not more here with all the additional sewer laterals. The utilities are just not in this location. So we have to bring all of that into this location. That's for any development on this site. So if you were to utilize this site as is under current zoning, you would get maybe six, maybe seven units. This commercial piece is 35 units per acre. You could do a ton on it. There's just not utilities or infrastructure for it. So with all of that expense to develop this land, you have to be able to build in some type of density and actually get some usable yards for these people. These are typically single families that move in. The people that have bought our other units are single moms, single dads, new couples with young children that are just getting their first home. I understand the question about the road behind and the access, but at the same time, these driveways are 20 feet wide with two driveways, which is the same as any single family house. That impact to that street is no more than seven homes, and these actually front the sides. I would say for these people that are gonna live here, it's more beneficial for them to actually have that green space and yards to play in than it would be to have pavement behind them my personal opinion. Any other questions? Is there anyone in Chambers that would like to speak to this? Hi, I'm Belinda Scaglione, 1404 East 28th Avenue, and I do appreciate um, Catherine's help in getting that tree removed. This is my uh, property right Get my glasses off to see here. Um, my property is right here. So my concern besides the density, which I, I understand that they have to make a profit, but there's a lot of houses there. My concern is this area right here. We're going to have a huge uh, pond there. It's going to be attracting mosquitoes. So you got 16 new residents, nine of us that are already there. And all of us are going to have a pool of mosquitoes and debris and all sorts of problems with that. I don't understand all the logistics as to why that has to be done and why the city that has to be done says that has to be done. But to me, this is a very big headache. It's entire, my backyard and my entire backyard is going to be covered with this retention pond. And... Um, I enjoy going out there and being able to enjoy the outdoors, and now I'm going to be afraid of going out there and getting eaten up by mosquitoes and other debris and things that fall down. And although this has been something that's been going on for a while, if you saw the pictures that he had, this whole area has been a huge mess for a long, long time, which I'm grateful that that's going to be cleaned up. But at the same time, all of this time that this property has been like this, I've been dealing with that tree that just finally got removed that could have killed my granddaughter. And all of this stuff that's back there, they say, I guess it's going to be an HOA. I don't know. Who's going to be responsible to clean that retention pond? Who's going to be responsible to, to make sure that that's safe back there? I mean, is it going to be, you know, these kids are going to be playing back there and they're going to go into the pond. I'm sure it's going to have some sort of fencing. But then that's a problem of who's going to make it clean, who's going to keep it from debris, not only from the trees, but just everyday stuff, um, and then the water. Obviously, we know we have our rains every day, so there's going to be a lot of water in that area, and it's a huge space, as Catherine pointed out to you. So I would kindly request that something be done to readjust this area so that we don't have such a large retention pond. If, we, if there has to be one, is it because they have taken up so much of the land that there's nowhere for the water to go and now the city's requiring them for, to put this back there? Does that mean that maybe one or two units needs to be eliminated? I don't know. I don't know the answer. All I know is that I appreciate that this is going to be done and that it's going to improve the area, but at the same time, it's going to be a big headache for me and the rest of the neighbors who are there, plus the new people who are going to be moving in. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Anyone else would like to make public comments? Petitioner, you have rebuttal. Thank you, Council. Catherine Coyle again. <clears throat> this retention area, and that's the reason why uh, I wrote it as a retention area, is not actually planned to be wet um, because the drainage is actually going to be retained and uh, conveyed from each lot. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, because of the way the subdivision rules and the stormwater rules work, um, even if I wanted to carve this up and pull these lots all the way back and these would belong to each one, I would still have to create a common retention area. Even if this was just nine single family homes, I'm still required to do that <laughs> because this land has not been subdivided. That is the current procedure under the city rules. Got some goods. But a retention area holds water, does it not? Um, it can. It can. But not for it doesn't it depends on the storm and it depends on the elevations, but it doesn't have to hold it for a long period of time. This is probably going to be maybe one feet foot deep at the center, but it's also going to meander around these trees. It's not it, we can't go into the protective radius of these trees. And the, the uh, one of the uh, she mentioned a, this is a HOA subdivision. We are required to do a subdivision, yes, because the land is not platted currently. I could, in reality, we could come in and do one house here and one house on this entire lot and not have to subdivide. But that's literally the limit. I mean, and I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to provide housing, but it just, you know, when I see these type of developments, it's like a bunch of sardines that are packed in there. And in years past, I, I just know. Uh, and hopefully these be good homeowners, but sometimes these developments turn into what I call rental properties, and it tends to sometimes hurt neighborhoods. That's my opinion. Nicole, is that the end of your rebuttal? Um, you know, if it pleases council, I can certainly go back and, and take an extra couple of weeks and look at the layout again. We have laid it out as many possible ways as we can to save the trees and working under the current regulations that we have for subdivision and stormwater. And as I mentioned, the way that because this isn't platted, you literally could have one house on almost this entire lot and that's all you could actually do without triggering the other rules. So we're kind of stuck in that procedural limbo. Um, as far as pattern, as far as density and layout, this actually follows the pattern of the area. Um, I'm more than happy to take additional time. If, if is, is there any other comments? We need it. Questions? <laughs> well, if, if the applicant says you want to take some more time, I'm not against it. In fact, uh, I got I make. Uh, the young lady, Ms. Caglione, did call the office last week, I think it was, on a certain day, and Mary gave me three errands to do. She gives me the errands, and I got to go do them. So three of them, this was one of them, and it was about the tree. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, they were cutting the limb over the property that Ms. Caglione was talking about. So I came back. I did, I believe I do, took some pictures with my phone, but I never looked at them. So I know I, I know you had three trucks, one with a big boom up there taking mm -hmm. that tree out the limbs anyway yeah we just had to wait for the city's okay yeah, on it I, um, I just went i saw that and i left yeah unfortunately the contact that miss guy leone had was someone that's no longer with domain i'm glad she got a hold of me because i certainly didn't want to have any no mary's the one that situation. gave me that she gave me two others but this one came before me so i said I might as well say it now so what what you said earlier is that no matter if you have two or three less houses, you still got to have that pond back there, not the pond, whatever you call it. We still have to provide a stormwater uh, retention area, um, and we still have to go through the subdivision process. We will still have to do the water main extension. The water main extension comment that we got was when we first looked at this and thought, if we just do single family, uh, what is the potential for that? And then we tried different scenarios. It was a six inch water main extension and the stormwater pond in the same location because that's the only place because of the way the lot's shaped yeah. um, no, I, just I, for seven or eight houses so the economics are really tough on this particular lot 
I know the neighborhood pretty well. I grew up around there. I'm sure you did. It's good in Park. Okay. Yeah, it's getting uh, and, and it's I, coming back little by little. And I will say the the neighbors that I did turn in, um, I spoke with the ones that were there that day, and they were very enthusiastic. Um, Mr. Campbell, that faces 15th, longtime plumber for Casper Company, he was amazing to talk to. <laughs> um, Zaneda, who lives on the corner directly across, uh, Willie, who lives directly across in the in the duplex. Um, they were extremely excited uh, to have something happen, and they loved the elevations, and that's why they signed. <laughs> Customer good. I mean, I, 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 I'm not complaining because the area, area needs a look, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's why I said a lot of those homes, you know, just need a little tender love and care. To, to, you know, some of those folks that are older over there, older, need money to rehab their properties to, to bring it back. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have an issue with that. That's not my issue. Um, just for the general public, because some people don't understand what platted and non platted means. You just, you know, when, you, when you talk oh, about that. Oh, officially the land has not uh, been carved up legally and recorded lot by lot as uh, on adjacent blocks where you would have 24 pre platted lots on a block. Um, this is just a couple big parcels of land. I have no further questions. Right. Got a motion to close by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 1401, 1409, 1411, 1413, and 1415 East 29th Avenue and 3510 North 15th Street. In the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS50 residential single family and CI commercial intensive to PD plan development residential single family semi detached and detached providing an effective day. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Mascock and seconded by Councilman Goods. Roll call vote. Hartet? No. Miranda? No. No. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goose? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried with Hertek and Miranda voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 20th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Very much. Agenda item number 13, final for REC 22-51. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. This is for the uh, property they address 6202 Inner Bay Boulevard and 6001 South Marndale Avenue. Proposed rezoning from CN and RS60 to PD Plan Development Residential Single Family Detached. And I'll pass it along to Danny Collins. Danny Collins uh, with your Planning Commission staff. I've been sworn in. Um, our next case is within the South Tampa Planning District and more specifically within the South of Gany neighborhood. Um, Skyview Park is the closest uh, public recreation facility, which is located a quarter mile south of the subject site. The site is uh, not within uh, proximity to transit. Um, the subject site is located um, within a level uh, B evacuation zone, and the subject site is within the McDale Air Force flight path, or flight path which limits development to 10 dwelling units per acre. <coughs> Here's an aerial map of the subject site and the surrounding properties. You'll see the subject site, it's outlined in purple. Um, it's generally southwest of the South Martindale Avenue and Inner Bay uh, Boulevard uh, intersection. Um, there's predominantly residential uses um, along uh, uh, north of the subject site along uh, Inner Bay with some, uh, some uh, light commercial uses um, to the northeast of the subject site. Um, there's some vacant land um, to the west of the subject site as well as some uh, single family detached to the south. Um, the subject site is currently recognized under the residential 20 future land use designation. Um, that's R20 is to the north, uh, east, and south of the subject site. R R10 is to the west. Um, though it is within the residential 20 designation, it is within the flight path and it is limited to 10 dwelling units per acre. The Planning Commission staff uh, reviewed the application about found no adverse impacts to the surrounding neighborhood. South Martindale Avenue, uh, which is east of the subject site, contains uh, residential 20 designated parcels, 
that are being utilized for multifamily, two-family, and detached single-family uses. Uh, north, Inner Bay, north of Inner Bay uh, is a detached single-family neighborhood with our 10 uh, designated parcels uh, that are oriented internally to South 6th Street. The Planning Commission staff finds that the request is comparable uh, to the existing density uh, found in the uh, immediate surrounding area and is compatible with the surrounding uses. Um, sidewalks do not currently exist along South Martindale Avenue, Interbay, and South 6th Street. Uh, the P PD proposes uh, five-foot sidewalks uh, adjacent to the site along South Martindale Avenue and Interbay. Um, though the applicant does, did not provide a sidewalk adjacent to the site along South 6th Street on the site plan, a notice provided stating the developer will make improvements to 6th Street, uh, which will include repaving and widening of the roadway, installing sidewalks and street lights. The proposed sidewalks along all adjacent uh, rights of way uh, will help ensure sidewalks interconnect with existing and future sidewalks on adjacent parcels. In conclusion, the request uh, will maintain the stability of existing areas while um, expanding opportunities for housing choices in the South Tampa Planning District. The request is comparable and compatible with this portion of the inner bay south of Getty neighborhood and is consistent with the long range development pattern encouraged under the uh, residential 20 future land use design designation and within the uh, McDill Air Force flight path. Planning Commission staff recommends that the applicant list uh, our 20 designation site data table and acknowledge that the site is within the flight path on the site plan between first and second readings. Um, based on those considerations, the Planning Commission staff finds the request consistent with the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. I'll go ahead and share the site plan. Property. The proposed rezoning is to allow for the development of the property for five residential single-family detached units. As you see, all five single-family. The property is uh, containing a lot area of 38,951 square feet or 0 .0, uh, 0.87 acres in size. The lots currently vacant at this time encompassed to the north inner bay to the west uh, you have 6th Street, and to the east, you have South uh, Marndale Avenue. Coming a little bit closer to the site. You'll see each uh, residence has two car garage. The properties to the north are zoned CN. These also are developed with residential, single family, and restaurant uses. The lots to the south are zoned RS60. Uh, this lot is developed with a club. The lot to the west is zoned RS60. The lot is zoned uh, RS60 and developed with a daycare. And the lots to the east are zoned RM16 and RS60. And they are developed with residential single family and multifamily residences. As I'll show you, you have lot one. Has a square footage of 8,925 square feet. Lot two. 7,294 square feet. Lot three, 7,563 square feet. Lot four, 7,598 square feet. And lot five, 7,571 square feet. The setbacks are as follows. To the north, you have 20 feet. South, 10 feet. East, five feet. And west, five feet. The maximum proposed height is for 30 feet in height. No, no waivers are being requested. I'll share the overhead aerial view. I see the parcels here outlined in red. As I went out to the site, it is currently vacant, as you'll see in the picture that follows. As you see to the northeast, you'll see the TP Taco, and you'll see uh, a restaurant down the way, a seafood restaurant. Nice. To the north, you'll have those residential single family and multifamily houses. <coughs> to 
to the northeast, you'll have more residential, single family and multifamily. And to the west, you'll have commercial, restaurant, and residence. Development Coordination has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the Land Development Code. Should it be staff's or should it be council's pleasure to approve the project, the applicant must provide revisions as per the revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Petitioner. Good evening. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what the story there. We can need you see to me? see you. Can you see me? No, we cannot. Oh, I have been all night waiting for this. <laughs> well, <wait. So laughs> yes, sir. I don't know what the story. We need yes, to see uh, you, sir. Yes, uh, people can use this to click to turn off your camera. I'm not sure what the story. I'm I'm very sorry about that. Mr. Chairman, is he, is he on a, a desktop, a laptop, I, or a I, cell phone? I have no earthly idea. Sir, are you on your uh, computer? Are you on a laptop or desktop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, me, let me try uh, uh, the phone uh, in a second, if you don't mind. Oh, the phone. Uh, what? Phone, no. phone will not work. You need to be on a computer or a tablet. I'm on the computer already. Hmm. Turn your yeah, camera I, on, please. So sorry about that. All right, we, we will move on to the next agenda item. Sir, we're going to have, have T and I work with you, okay? I understood. Thank you. Thank you. File number, excuse me, agenda item number 17, file number REC 22-72. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. This is proposed rezoning from PD to PD office business professional retail sales, restaurant, bar, lounge, and residential multifamily at the location 2907 West Beta Bay and folio number 127083.0000. We'll now pass along to Danny Collins. Danny Collins again uh, with your Planning Commission staff. I've been sworn in. Um, our next case is in the uh, South Tampa Planning District and more specifically in the Bayshore Gardens neighborhood. Fred Ball Park is the closest public recreation facility uh, being located 0.2 miles northeast of the subject site. Uh, the closest transit stop is located on the southeast corner of the subject site along West Bay to Bay uh, Boulevard. Uh, the stop is uh, served by Heart Route 14 providing connections to Britain Plaza and Yukon Transfer uh, Center. Subject site is um, within a level A evacuation zone and it's also within the coastal hazard area. Here is uh, an aerial map of the subject site and surrounding properties. You'll see the subject site is outlined in this um, purple color. Uh, it's one block uh, west of Bayshore Boulevard and uh, just to the east of the Selman Expressway. This is the adopted future land use map. The subject site is within the community mixed use 35 designation. Um, directly to the north of the subject site is uh, the, I think, I believe that's the R50 um, designation. Um, CME 35 is to the west of the subject site. Um, and then um, R35 is to the east of the subject site. Um, the Planning Commission staff reviewed the application and found no adverse impacts to the surrounding neighborhood. The PD proposes a 2.0 FAR, uh, which is consistent with intensity anticipated under the CME 35 designation. Uh, surrounding parcels are designated um, RE3, R50, uh, 
and residential 35, uh, which all anticipate a medium uh, to high density development pattern. As such, the Planning Commission staff finds the request comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern. The PD uh, addresses several of the mixed use corridor policies. Um, sidewalks are present along all adjacent rights of way and internal pedestrian connections are provided. Um, if feasible, um, Planning Commission staff requests that a crosswalk uh, be provided between parcels one and two uh, across the drive aisle from South Isabella Avenue uh, between uh, first and second readings. Uh, this revision will help uh, ensure the sidewalks interconnect with existing and future sidewalks on the property. Um, in conclusion, the proposed PDA uh, rezoning would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding area is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the CME 35 designation. Um, based on these considerations, the Planning Commission staff finds the request consistent with the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. This concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. I'll go ahead and share the aerial view of the property. The proposed rezoning is to allow for development of the property with an office, business professional, retail sales, a restaurant, bar and lounge, and residential multifamily uses. The subject site contains a lot area of 3.56 acres or 155,000 73 square feet in size. To the west, you'll have residential, multifamily, and business professional office uses. Uh, along here, uh, along to the west and north and south, you'll have the Selma Expressway. To the east, you'll have Bayshore Boulevard. To the south, you'll have residential, multifamily. And to the north, you'll have residential, residential, multifamily, uh, and commercial uses. I will now share the site plan proposed. So there's two parcels. You have uh, parcel one and parcel two. Parcel one includes an office, business professional, and retail sales. You also have the restaurant here and also you have a bar lounge. Parcel one is going to be, is proposed to be 1.82 acres or 79,366 square feet for a maximum height of 250 feet. The setbacks are to the north, 15 feet, south, five feet, east, five feet, and west, 20 feet. Parcel two is uh, proposed to be residential multifamily. There are 73 residential multifamily units. Uh, parcel two is 1.74 acres or 75,794 square feet with a maximum height of 274 feet with 24 stories. The setbacks are to the north two feet, south 15 feet, east five feet, and west five feet. I'll now show the elevations provided by the applicant. Elevation from the east. Elevation from the west. Elevations from the north side and the south. And you have the second building. You have elevations from the east, west, north, and south. As I went out to the site and took pictures, you'll see what currently is at the site. Public notice sign in the front. You have the uh, office space here. You have counterculture uh, restaurant. The office space on the site. 
Smartronics. Another picture of the site. We have counterculture, and also you have Bayshore Center office. You have the condominium. Proposed 24 stories. To the south of the site, you'll have Bayshore, and you'll have the Aquatica on Bayshore uh, Condominium. To the southeast of the site, you'll have a sign of the Bayshore Gardens, you'll have Bayshore on the waterway. Also to the east of the site, you'll have a nonprofit organization. And to the east of the site, you'll have Bayshore and Bay to Bay. Development review and compliance staff has worked with the applicant. Uh, the applicant is requesting one waiver, and that's for parking. There's a reduction in parking proposed from 605 parking spaces to 458 parking spaces. This is a 24% reduction. Development review and coordination uh, has reviewed the application and finds it overall to be inconsistent with the City of Tampa Land Development Code. Should it be Council's um, pleasure to approve the application, the applicant must provide revisions between first and second reading as per the revision sheet. Thank you. Councilman Goods. Zane, give me that parking reduction number again. Yes, sir. Uh, proposed parking from 605 required to 458 uh, being proposed. 24% reduction. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Petitioner. Evening Council, Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. If we could uh, bring up the PowerPoint for 17. Yep. I'm trying to make this quick. Um, with me here this evening is uh, Wood Britton and Matt Muse from Asana Partners. They are the developers based out of Charlotte. Sitting in the very back, we've got a lot of experts. The only one really pertinent to this uh, specific hearing is Randy Cohen, who's right behind me. I think we have a pretty good sense of where the site is. That's exactly what it looks like now as you're coming off of Bayshore going west towards the on-ramp to the Crosstown. It's about three and a half acres. I think it's really important to note that there's been several zoning changes for this land. Zane mentioned the residential part. That was approved back in 2016. We're not proposing any changes to that. That's not new. We don't even own it anymore. That's a, a, a condo that's, that's being constructed. All we're talking about today is the office building. We're not talking about tearing it down. We're not talking about any footprint changes at all. All we are here to do is reduce the office entitlements slightly, increase the restaurant entitlement slightly, solely as to the first floor. And that's a somewhat insubstantial change, but under the code, that's actually enough of a change to bring this already approved PD right back to you. So that's why we're here for that fairly narrow purpose. And to reiterate, uh, we are not here about the red part, just about the blue part. In terms of the numbers, uh, we're talking about a reduction in the office square footage by 13,000 square feet, in addition of restaurant retail square footage of 21,000 square feet. The idea is that the first floor of the, the buildings, the, the office buildings, uh, really be devoted to residential retail, or sorry, retail and F&B, food and beverage uses to support so the growing density that's around this area in lieu of office. The office will continue to be the primary use for the rest of the floors, and then we're proposing the addition of a restaurant, a potential bar use on the rooftop. Uh, I would note that the only portion of this building right now that is wet zoned is the counterculture restaurant. So any alcohol service and any of these new restaurant or retail entitlements that we're seeking will come before you uh, through a separate wet zoning. But that's not, not before you this evening. That's what we have in mind for what the building uh, will look like. Uh, it's, it's 
pretty amazing what you can do with, with reskinning the building as it's referred to. So this would significant changes to the windows, the exterior facades, um, looking at sort of a green wall concept on the, the easterly building. A little bit closer shot there. As Dean alluded to on the staff side, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, support from a lot of reviewing agencies, including the Planning Commission. Uh, we do not have support from transportation because we're seeking a parking waiver, and I'd like to talk a little bit about that right now. Uh, Randy is here to, to go into detail if anyone has questions, but there's, there's really three motivating reasons for the, the parking reduction. The first is that this is a cluster of emerging residential density that didn't exist at all five years ago. Uh, right now, you've got over 500 units that are within well, not much more than a quarter block. So the, the Monte Carlo you can see on screen, that, that's been there for some time. But you know, it's Carlton Development, you have Aquatica, which is literally across the street. It was shown in uh, Zane's photo slideshow. You have uh, Altura's uh, Development, which is, that's the parcel I told you we're not talking about. That's literally next door to us. That's over 70 units. So this is a really a, a nice emerging cluster of residential density that, that, that did not exist before. And the goal of this type of use, the, rest, the retail, restaurant use, is to have this you know, be akin to a much, much smaller scale but version of a Hyde Park Village, where it's very compatible, fits in with the community around it. And the anticipation is that a lot of the, the, the patrons of the establishments that are gonna be going in are folks who live with, within a quarter mile, which even by Tampa standards, we think is, is a very reasonable amount of distance to walk and not to drive. The second element of, of the parking reduction request is the overlapping nature of the uses. Uh, again, Randy can go into this in greater detail, but based on our analysis, we believe that the maximum parking utilization we'll have is 282 parking spaces, and that's as to the, the restaurant retail office component. And that's between 7 and 9 p.m. when the folks who are at the office, it's really just the folks who are there at the very end of the day, and that's when the retail res, uh, restaurant use is really amping up. And we have uh, really over 301 spaces dedicated to the combined office, retail, residential uses, which we think is more than appropriate. And the third reason, too, is, is and Randy can talk about this in greater depth if council desires, is that the, the literature from ITE, here at the ITE trip manual, here at ULI, and their recommendations on parking, that hasn't really caught up to the, the normal, the, the, whatever new normal environment this is, where there is a greater tendency to work from home. Um, and we're not assuming that's going to last forever, but I think the assumption that every single one of these office units is going to have, uh, is going to be fully occupied uh, for the full work day, we, we don't think that's an assumption that we can rely on into the future, but that is what our parking is based on. So in conclusion, we think there's more than enough parking to service this development. It's absolutely not in our interest to underpark it. Um, we're not talking at all about the residential parking they, they're taking care of on their own, but for the uses we are proposing and based on Asana's experience developing these types of mixed use centers around the country, uh, we're very confident that this parking waiver is gonna be adequate. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Is there anyone that is wanting to speak in chambers to agenda item number 17, file number REZ 22-72? We do have one person on. Yes, Ms. Pamela Carpenter. Ms. Carpenter? Unmute yourself, please. Turn your camera on. Ms. Carpenter, are you there? Ms. Carpenter, you need yes, to unmute yourself, please. I can see please. myself, and I think you can hear me now. Yes, thank you. this morning. You Okay. Yes. Ma'am, you need to raise your right hand and be sworn in. All right. Um, I am a resident in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm Pamela Carpenter, a resident, 25 year resident in the neighborhood. Um, we were able to meet with the developers. Uh, they answered all of our questions uh, except one that I'd like to reconfirm. Uh, a sidewalk on Isabella, which is currently parallel paths, 
the rendering does show a sidewalk. So that sidewalk would connect to the next development in the parcel of Altura, but there's currently no sidewalk. It's currently parallel parking on the street. And that's the only comment I have on it. I thank you very much. There's no one else in chambers for comment. Would you like to rebuttal? Tyler Hudson, for the record, um, we were familiar with uh, Ms. Harbinger's concerns. There is a sidewalk. It's, in, it's not out of the generosity of our heart. It's part of the required bonus agreement that this property is subject to back in 2016. So there will be a sidewalk exactly as shown on the renderings uh, running along the north side of the Isabella right away. Uh, for the property so thanks. that's it any other comments or questions motion to close by councilman maniscalco seconded by councilman carlson all in favor Aye. uh councilman goods <laughs> rez-22-72 Ordinance be presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2907 West Bay to Bay Boulevard and following number 127083.40 in the city of Tampa, Florida, and what is described in section one from zoning district classification PD plan development to PD plan development office, business slash professional, retail sales, restaurant, bar slash lounge, and residential multifamily providing effective date. Second. A motion made by Councilman Goods, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Hurtak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 20th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Do we have the petitioner for agenda item number 13? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. What about now? No, sir. Yes, sir. Now we can see you and we can hear you. Please raise your right hand so you can be sworn in. Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please state well, your name for the record? Yes, sir. Good evening, Council. My name is J.D. I'm with Sycamore Engineering, 8370 West Hillsborough Avenue, Suite 205, Tampa, Florida, 33615, and I have already sworn. Just make it quickly, as you see, the staff uh, found the application uh, request is consistent with the City of Tampa LDC requirement. We have reviewed the staff report, and we are in agreement on the proposed revision and condition. There's nothing else to add except ask you for your approval and uh, ready to answer any questions. Is there any comments or any questions for the petitioner? No comments or questions for the petitioner. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? Is there anyone online? <coughs> Move to close. Thank you. I have a motion to close by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Councilwoman Hurtak. Okay, file number REZ 22-51, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 6202 Inner Bay Boulevard and 6001 South Martindale Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS60 residential single family and CN commercial neighborhood to PD plan development residential single family detached providing an effective date. I have a motion made by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Miranda? Yes. Hurtak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goose? Yes. Vieira? 
Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on October 20th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. And I thank you very much. Information reports. Councilman Carlson. Yes, sir. If I may, I just have one uh, quick one. Um, Got to open my phone. Um, I'm getting a, everywhere. I, I don't know about you all, but everywhere I go, I get questions about the Bloomberg contract. And so I would just like to make a motion to ask city staff to report to council during staff reports on October 20th as to an update on the Bloomberg agreement, including how many consultants, the departments they are embedded in and any advice given to date. How Second. many staff reports do we have that day? Last count 13. 13 staff reports. Yes, before your 930 public hearings. Thank you. Can we move that to another day, Council McCarlson? What's the next day we can move it to? What day did you ask for? 20th, October 20th. October 20th, uh, November, November 3rd. You only have 10 we staff have reports. 10. Right. We have 10 there. <laughs> 17. Yeah, let's do Unless, 17. Do you want, you want to wait that long? 17th of November. I don't think we can. Can we do it on the 3rd? We already have 10 staff reports there. It's up to you. Do you want a written report or do you want to have a, a discussion? No. I, I mean, when, you, when you're at, no offense, but when you're at 13 or 10. Let's do it on December 1st. How about December 1st? So November 17th is only one. November 17th? Yeah, but that's just before holidays. Which is good. Well, that's. All right, December 1st. Well, that, what, is that bad? I mean, the idea is that the idea is that we can hear and the public can hear, and so if it's just before the holidays, they 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 may not hear it, and then we will defeat the purpose of having a discussion. December first. What is how much? Is that too late? Motion made by Council McCarlson, seconded by whom? Councilwoman Hertak. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Anything further, Council McCarlson? Councilman Maniscalco. Nothing. Councilwoman Hertak. Councilman Goods? One, sir. I would like to make a motion for a presentation. The combination to this year's Water Wise Award recipient on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. But I'll have to get the, the name of the recipient. I don't know it yet. Second. Motion made by Councilman uh, Miranda. Seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilman Vieira. Uh, nothing at all, sir. I, I did want to add to the. Um, uh, Bloomberg um, motion that I, I have um, uh, been asked about that as well and heard some things and so I, I'd be uh, very interested uh, in, uh, in in hearing about that again just uh, a lot of interesting things out there so just interested in that as well thank you sir thank you I am turning in my BT report from a, a case we heard file number AB 221-32 uh, I had to accuse myself as I was a member of that organization. We have a motion uh, receiving file. I'm not finished yet. No, no, no for, for the, well, that. I, okay. Not that. We, we can do it all at one second. time. Can we? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Thank you very much. I move to have. Uh, we got a motion receiving file from Councilman Miranda. We have a second. Second. Second from Councilman Woman Hertig. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank Any you opposed? Very much. Yes, sir. I move to uh, to invite Ms. Beth Alden, Executive Decorator, Director, excuse me, of Hillsborough County Transportation Planning Organization, TPO, and speak to Tampa City Council regarding the TPO's September vote to amend the Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the TPO and the City of Tampa and provide input for the 2022 membership appointment plan. I would like her to present on October 6th. Regular meeting. Yes, it is. And that is, that is time sensitive. And questions with regard to this, at what point do we get to be locked out? Yeah, I'm sorry, under ceremonial? I, right yes, yeah, so right, right after ceremonials. Motion from Chairman Cedro, Second Council Member Carlson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion received. Aye. We've got a motion made by Councilman Mascot, second by Councilman Randall. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>